Hello, I'm John Blackshire with Corporate Compliance Seminars. Welcome to our short presentation of 10 Cybersecurity Risk Management Principles. These principles are the underlying concepts that we teach to in our Cybersecurity Risk Management Program events that we present in over 60 cities in the United States. Hopefully, this information will be useful to you in your cybersecurity program. We also would like to invite you to attend to one of our CPE events in the near future. Yes, cybersecurity is a concern for all organizations in this dangerous world. People are confused about what are all the different things that come up that are under the cybersecurity banner. That's one of the issues that we have to address in our programs is to simplify and boil it down to what are we really talking about and what are the actions and the things that we need to do in our programs to reduce risk. So you look at cybersecurity and then you have to come up with what it really means to you and the level of risk that your organization presents. That will then drive you to a program where you can put in place the 10 principles that we're going to talk about. Yes, information technology, what really is it? Back years ago when I first got into the software industry, it was explained to me as being simply being IPO, input, process, output. That's still what it is. There's input data, data that we use to bring into a process that we built some logic to do some manipulation of the data and turn it into information. And we take that information and we store it once again and we call it output data. What we need in a cybersecurity program is quality controls around that entire process. Those quality controls need to encapsulate the 10 principles that we're going to talk about today. And to do this, we need to have a good framework to work from. There are several different IT quality control frameworks. ITIL, CMMI, COBIT. We're not going to talk about any of those specifics today, but keep in mind these 10 principles can be applied to all of those quality control methodologies. Well, what are these 10 principles? We have a list on this slide, the 10 items we're going to talk about as we step through each slide in this presentation. These principles are not listed in any particular order today. The order is established once you start looking at your inherent risk. Once you get into your inherent risk, then you'll start thinking about where are our biggest risk? What are the things that we have to have the most mature controls against? What are our specific needs? This is why every cyber risk management program turns out to be a little different from the next. I'm not going to read you this list, and we're gonna step through it, and you're going to understand which each of these concepts covers. They're big words. I don't necessarily like using big words in presentations. I don't typically do that in classes, but what we're going to boil them down to is the simple facts of what do they mean. Simplicity. We need to have an overall IT strategy to simplify what we're doing, to simplify our environment, to simplify our processing. We need to look at, do we have multiple systems doing the same thing? Do we have some legacy systems that are hard to protect and hard to restrict what people can look at? We need to look at our overall environment and go toward a simpler environment that we can protect better from outside and inside risks. Simplification is the key to a lot of what we're going to do in our cyber risk management program. Abstraction, big word, but what it really means is how do we explain what we have to the people that are interested in it? How do we understand it ourselves? Do we have good documentation for our overall IT strategy? Do we have good documentation for each one of the applications we're using? Do we have good documentation for every one of the databases that are in our data center? Do we understand how our system development lifecycle actually works? We need to document all of these items so that then we can put inside them the cyber risk management techniques that we need to have in place, both in a development process and in a production process. So we need to understand what we have. Least privileged. I remember back in my first systems development project, University of South Carolina, 1972-73. 
I was a student helping test the student information system. Everybody on the project, everybody in the department had full access to every student's social security number, date of birth, name, home address. We display that on all the screens. So we need to step back from the things we did in yesterday's and we need to say, what is the information that we need to convey to the person doing this task? What is the information that we need to have accessible to each one of these people to produce certain things for inside the organization? We need to have least privileged access. And there are certain things we don't disclose to a lot of people. We should never, ever, ever show certain things on screens in the accounting department. Information like social security number, date of birth. The accounting department really doesn't need it. They can go over to payroll personnel and ask about it. So least privileged access, domain separation. We look at our overall IT environment and we say, we need places to develop software. We need to places to test software. We need places to run those processes in production. We need to look at making sure that these different areas are separated and that we have different layers of security around them based on their different needs. We don't want to put production data back in a development environment because that makes us have more and more controls over that development environment. We want to have a separate environment for development that has different security rules. But to help that along, we don't put production data there. We also look at our overall network, how it fits together, and how we need sometimes to have different networks and network separation so that we can protect ourselves. So we need to look at separating things to keep the hackers from getting access to everything with just one breakthrough. Process isolation. We need to look at our overall production environment and look at the things that we need to keep separate, the things that don't need to be running close to each other. We need to simplify the way things run in batch especially. We need to make sure that we have isolation so that if we have issues with a system, it's isolated and doesn't affect other things. So process isolation. Resource encapsulation. We have to look at all of our resources that are inside our information technology system and take care of them. We have to have a good preventive maintenance program. You gotta maintain the hardware, the software, and the system software. You have to make sure that you do good patch management. You have to make sure you have a very tight change control system. Remember what happened in Equifax? They didn't apply all the patches that they needed to to a piece of hardware. It allowed the hackers to get in and steal millions of records on individuals, causing them a huge problem. So we've got to look at our quality control system and say one of the most important pieces is change control and preventive maintenance and taking care of the assets that we have deployed in our production environment, our test environment, and in our development environment. Modularization. When you're building software, you can look at it and say, what are the things we need to put in separate processing modules so that we simplify the process of developing new software? But we also simplify the process of maintaining that software and maintaining the security of it. We want to look at having common modules for input, common modules for output, common modules for extracting reports, displaying things on screens. We need to understand the fact that the fewer modules that we have that contain actual processing logic, the easier it is to maintain the whole system. So this also goes back to simplification. But modernization has its place. We need to look at it and we need to make sure that we have as simple a set of modules as we can have to do the things we do over and over and over again. Information hiding. Two or three different aspects that come to mind when you start talking about information hiding. First off is just not displaying it to individuals. Second off is in databases encrypting information. 
some people think encryption is not that good because a lot of the hackers use tools to come in and they use your actual application software which encrypts items to pull data out of your databases. So information hiding has its place, especially when you're displaying things to somebody's workstation, when you're displaying things on reports that can be carried away. Information hiding, layering. You've got to look at your defenses and have multiple layers. You've also got to make sure the layers work together. At Target, they had multiple internal control failures that led up to one of the largest breaches of credit card information in the history of the world. Their first failure was at corporate governance. They had an ineffective IT governance process. They proposed changing their point of sale system in too short a period of time. They had an ineffective system development lifecycle process, which allowed them to put in a new piece of software that was not fully tested and vetted. The third failure was, yes, they were monitoring the flowing of data around in their network, and they realized there was too much data on that first Monday morning. But when they sent a message to the person in charge of the point of sale system, they did not respond to it. They did not have exception handling for someone not responding. And so the breach went on for two more weeks before that individual addressed the original email on that first Monday morning, and within a few minutes they realized they'd been breached. So you've got to have layers of control so that you protect yourself against governance issues, you protect yourself against development issues, you protect yourself against people not responding to a symptom of a problem. So you've got to have layers of defense and that protects you because one or two may fail, but four or five or six will catch the problem, layering. Minimization. This goes hand in hand with simplification. You want to look at your environment and you want to say, how do I set this up so that I use each one of my asset classes in the proper way? How do I set up our asset classes and make sure that I simplify what we have in that class? We look at other examples that have worked by simplification. Southwest Airlines business model works because they have one type of aircraft. They've simplified the preventive maintenance and the long-term maintenance problems for their aircrafts that differentiates them from everybody else's business model in the airline industry. You have to do the same thing inside information technology. You have to say to yourself, how do I make sure I have consistent use of the same software? How do I have consistent use of the same hardware? How do I have consistent use of the same system software? So we want to look at things and decrease the number of ways that we're doing things and we want to focus on a certain tool set of tool sets and then maintain those, as we talked about earlier, in an encapsulated environment where we have quality control. What is the point to all this? The point to all this is to know yourself and also know your enemies. You've got to look out there and understand this is not a passing fad. This is going to be with us forever. We need to establish a cyber risk management program that is comprehensive and addresses the inherent risk that is presented by our organization. We need to look at who we are in the way of hardware, software, application software. We need to make sure that we look out there and we understand who the outsiders are and who the insiders are that will attack us. We need to go with what the general said back in the 700s about winning battles. He said, know yourself know your enemy, and you will win a hundred battles without a disaster. That's what this is all about, is fighting the battles and never losing. It's not going to go away. Hopefully this program has been useful to you, and you will attend one of our cyber training events in the future. Thank you. My name is John Blackshear. Give me a call, 
4373. I'm available to talk.